of us Thursday night. We'll start at 8 o'clock, and uh, as a church family, we're going to partake in, in communion and then wait for the new year to come in playing games and uh, spending some time together. Does that sound good? Yeah, so uh, come on over and spend some time with us. Start at 8 o'clock, and we'll have communion together and then uh, wait in for the new year playing some games and uh, having a good time together as a church family and uh, something to do other than what the world expects us to do. What the world expects us to do is certainly ends in a hangover sometimes. And so uh, spend the time with us, okay? And no, not wake up on the 1st of January with a hangover. That sounds like a good plan, right? I like that plan. You come on board. Uh, tonight, we're going to look at why am I a Baptist? Yep, and it will be an encouragement to you and uh, those around and also an encouragement about, about communion and what communion is all about. So be sure to come tonight and uh, we'll have a great blessed time. Tonight, or rather this morning, I want to share with you in light of the new year. And you might think as I get started here, now where do you get the new year out of that? Well, just hang on and you hopefully at the end will get a glimpse of my thoughts this morning. I'd like to encourage you to join me in your copy of the Word of God to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. We're going to focus on Daniel chapter 3, but in way of introduction, I want to go back and read some verses in chapter 2. Daniel chapter 3 is where we're going to be focusing on. That's where the message, the three points come from. But in way of introduction, we need to look at Daniel chapter 2. If you start from the new or the uh, from the book of Psalm, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastic, Song of Psalm, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. So if you find Psalm, which is the biggest book in the Old Testament, and turn eight books to the right, you'll find the book of Daniel. Or you can look in the concordance for the number. But join me in Daniel chapter 3. But first of all, I want to read some verses in Daniel chapter 2. Here in Daniel chapter 2, let me read here verse 1. It says this, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams. Uh, yes, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. He wasn't able to sleep. He was tossing and turning, wondering, what does this dream mean? Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Now listen to the unusual request that the king has. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king of, of Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. If you tell us the dream, what you dream, give us the story, and then we can tell you what it means. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. So the king was asking him something unusual. I don't remember the dream, but it troubled me in such a way. I want you to not only tell me what it means, but I want you to tell me what I dreamed. Well, the, all those Chaldeans and interpreters and astrologers said, that's not common. You, you can't do that. You, you need to share with us what the dream was about. Verse 7, they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. And the king answered and said, I know of a certainty that ye would gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Tell the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter, 
Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. So here are these men saying, this can't be done. This is impossible. You, you can't do that. There, there's no way. No, only the gods can tell you this answer. Look at verse 16. When Daniel heard what was going on, and uh, he went before the Lord. Look at verse 16. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Then they would desire uh, mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret, and Daniel and his followers should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel, the God of heaven, allowed him to understand in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. So Daniel was given the dream. And this dream was incredible. This dream was of a huge image. It was made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay. It represented the kingdoms of the world. Babylon, Medes and the Persians, Greece, and then Rome. We know during the silent years that Greece came into power as a world power, and then Rome. Rome made the roads. Greece had the, or, or Greece had the main language of, of transport and language of business. This was an awesome dream, an awesome opportunity to know what was about to happen. So the king blessed Daniel gave him a promotion. He even gave him a raise, I'm sure. How many of you would like a raise today? Anybody like a raise? You bet. I'm sure he got a raise. I'm sure he got a promotion. And, and then Daniel, probably because of this new promotion, probably left. He probably wasn't on the scene. And so in Daniel chapter 3, we come to Daniel chapter 3, and you know what that dream declared? That dream declared to King Nebuchadnezzar that his land, his throne was temporary, that it was not going to last. And you know, you could just imagine that King Nebuchadnezzar probably wasn't very happy. Even though Daniel shared with him this truth and shared with him something that no other man has ever had. Nobody else has been able to see the future like this man has. King Nebuchadnezzar. He looked at that image, and you know what I think he did? I think he said, you know, I'm going to build my own image. Look at this in Daniel chapter 3. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. Not of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay. He just made it all out of gold. He was telling to God that my land will last forever. My land's not going to end the, the land of Babylon is going to continue on. It's, it's not going to be divided. Whose height was threescore cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He set this image up. And I think what this image was, it was a spitting image of the dream that he had. And what he was doing was defying what God said. My land's not going to end. It's going to last forever. I'm going to do things my way. I don't believe what God says. I'm going to do it my way. And he sets up this image. And you know what he does with it? Verse 2, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princesses, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, and the treasurers, the counselors, and the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Who set up the image? King Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> God didn't set it up. This image was a, a direct image to defy what God had said. I'm going to make this image my own, and I'm going to make everybody worship it. My land will stand forever. It is made of gold. It's made exactly the way God put it in the dream. And he was saying, this is my God. I'm going to worship this God because my land will not falter. Verse 3, 
then the princesses, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together onto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. Well, this image has eyes, but it can't see. It's got ears, but it can't hear my prayers. It's got feet, but it can't walk. Oh, yes, this God couldn't do anything for you. He was made by the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar, his own God. Then an herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. I call this the rock band of Babylon. Ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso faileth not, falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. That's the first mention of the furnace, and scholars wonder, well, where did that come from? I think it was probably developed, developed and built for the purpose of constructing the image. So they used that, that furnace to melt down the gold to be able to fashion it into this golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So whoever does not fall down before this image is going to be cast into the fiery furnace. Huh. So it says in verse 7, Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, you remember the rock band of Babylon, all the people, the nation, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore at that time, certain Chaldeans near came near and accused the Jews. Well, here's the setting. King Nebuchadnezzar sets up this image, this huge image defying what God had already said. And so he said, everybody in my kingdom is to fall down and worship. Remember, Daniel's not mentioned. I think because of his promotion, he was given a raise. He was given a uh, raise and promotion. He was gone. He was out of the kingdom doing business for the king. So here we have the Jews and all those individuals in the land of Babylon coming and falling down as the music begins to play. Well, Daniel had some friends. Remember Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah? Remember those three? I just read about them. Had friends. He asked them to pray that God will answer his prayer, that he would see the image. Do you remember all these Chaldeans and sorcerers and, and astrologers? They were all going to die. And, and they were excited. Hey, Dan Daniel's going to pray. Daniel saved our lives. Those Chaldeans should be thankful. But here are three men, three men, Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah. They had a choice to make. They had a choice to make. Are we going to fall down and worship this image, or are we going to stand? Are we going to stand up for what's right? We know what God said. God said that King Nebuchadnezzar's land is not going to last forever. It is going to fall. Babylon, Medes and the Persians, Greece and Rome. God's going to take control. This land is going to end. We know who our God is and we're only going to worship him. He is the true and living God and him only are we going to bow our knee to. So these three men had a choice to make. They had a choice to make. Are we going to stand up? Or are we going to fall down to this image? Are we going to worship the gods of this world that King Nebuchadnezzar set up? Or are we going to stand up for what's right and what's true? Now, King Nebuchadnezzar so easily, listen to this, King our, our, Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah so easily could have covered this up. It would have been so easy. Hananiah could have looked over at Michelle and said, hey, your shoe is untied. And everybody could get down and help him tie his shoe. Hananiah could say, hey, I wonder if the soil in Babylon is as good as it is in Israel. Let's take it. Now, by the way, hold on, hold on, wait a second now. They're not worshiping the image, right? They're tying their shoes. Or they're checking the soil of Babylon, right? It would have been so easy to cover this up. So easy to say, hey, you know, we'll just, we'll just appear as though we're doing what the king wants us to do. But Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah said, no, 
we don't even want it to be a question. We don't want anybody to even get the hint of the idea that we're worshiping that image. So they chose to stand up. And you know, that's what we need to do in the world today. Let's think about this new year that's coming before us. It is so easy to cover it up. It's so easy to make the world think, hey, we agree with them. It is so easy just to smooth it over. But it takes courage to stand up. To say, no, hey, I, I don't agree with what the world is saying today. I don't agree that this world just happened. No, there's a creator. He designed it. He created it. It's so easy to fall down and worship the gods of this world. But Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, you might better know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those three men stood up. They stood up for what was right. And look at what it says here in verse 8. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. That's just so amazing to me. Those Chaldeans are still alive because of Daniel. Still alive because of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Who, who prayed to their God and God answered their prayer to reveal to them what God was about to do. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah stood up for what was right. Babylon. Medes and the Persians, Greece, Rome, and then the ten nations of the world, ruling the world at the last time. Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah chose to stand up. Look at verse 9. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. I'm trying to butter him up again. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man should hear the sound of the cornet. You remember the rock band of Babylon. Look at verse 11. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. And here they are, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That's written Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They looked at that image and said, that image is not God. I've spoken to him this morning, and those lips didn't move. I know who my God is, and I'm going to worship him. I'm going to serve him, Yahweh, the true and living God. They weren't going to worship a phony. They chose to stand up. You know, that takes a lot of courage. Even in the world today, that takes a lot of courage. But not only did Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah choose to stand up, but listen to point number two. They also chose to stand fast. Look at verse 15. Or you could look at verse 13 too. Look at this. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods? nor worship the golden image. You notice the word gods there is small g. Nor worship the golden image which I have set up, which I, <laughs> he's the one who set it up. He's the one in his own hand. Could you imagine worshiping something that you build yourself? That's what they did. Now, if ye be ready, <laughs> in that kind of him. Now, if you be ready, you know, as though they weren't ready before. You know, if thou be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the rock band of Babylon again, remember, which I have made. Well, that's good. That's good. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And I like this question. I like, they don't answer it right now, but later on they will. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of? Of my hand. Although as though he thought himself to be God. To be the ruling power of that day. Who is that God? So Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah had another chance. They had another chance. They stood up. And everybody recognized. Hey, you, you don't believe in our God? And so ne King Nebuchadnezzar comes along and says. Hey, I'm going to give you another chance. Now Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah could have said. You know. Maybe we should reconsider this. You know, that, 
that fiery furnace is probably a little hot, you know? And, and you know, I, I, I think that uh, just, just, just maybe, you know, but no. Hannah and I, Michelle and Azariah, not only stood up, but they stood fast. That takes courage. When we're confronted about something that we believe, oh, you believe that? Are you serious? And so often, we just kind of smooth it over and say, hey, you know, well, maybe, you know, uh, and you just keep that friend. But Hannah and I, Michelle and Azariah, they not only stood up, but they stood fast. We know what we believe. We know the God in whom we serve, and him only will we worship. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That's the way to stand fast. I know what I believe. I know where I stand. And your God is not the God that created this world. I know who God is. I worship him and him only do I worship. Then was Nebuchadnezzar in verse 19 full of fury. He was so angry and the form of his vestige was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times times more than it was wont to be heated. Folks, where's OSHA when you need them? That's probably not good for the furnace itself. That, that's too hot. It not only is going to melt the gold, supposedly, that's in it, but maybe even destroy the furnace. And he commanded the most mighty men, listen to this, the most mighty men, that they were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. So these men, they cast them in, they tied them up, and they cast them into the furnace. But that furnace was so hot that the flames leaped out. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and, and, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they died. They died. I've often asked, why did those men have to die? Why did those men, why did they perish? Well, I think there's a couple reasons. First of all, be careful when you put your hand on the man of God. Be careful. That's God's man. Be careful. Don't put your hand on the man of God. Don't do something illegal or or ways that will hurt him. That's the man of God. Secondly, I believe that those two men or those three men died when they threw him into that fiery furnace to let the world know that that furnace was hot enough. It was hot enough. There are people, scholars, they call themselves, that say, oh, that furnace was, they, they just kind of scooted to the edge of the furnace and got out of the way of the flames. That's why they didn't die. There, there's, a, there's a simple answer to it. No, those men, even outside of the furnace, it was so hot that they perished and died right there at the door. That furnace was hot enough. But not only was it hot enough, and not only should we be careful when we put our hands on the man of God, but we also know that that furnace was big enough for one more. Look at this, verse 23. And these three men, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, I like using their Hebrew names because that refers to the true and living God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refers to the gods of Babylon. These gods are not the true and living God, but Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, they were a picture of what and who God was. And the word of God says, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men? Three, three, one, two, three, three men bound into the midst of the fire. They answered and said unto the king, it's true, O king, we only threw in three. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. 
and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I believe that this was Christ before he was born in Bethlehem, the pre-incarnate Christ. Verse 36, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace. Don't get too close, king. You could die. It's pretty hot. And spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come on out here. Servants of the Most High God, come forth. Come hither. Come on out. And you know, folks, folks, I can just see Hananiah sticking his head out and saying, King, you wait a few minutes. We're talking to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You just wait a little bit. We're speaking to him. And you know, King, do you remember back here when you said, Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Do you remember that, King? Do you remember asking that question? Come on, come in here. He's right here. He's right here, the Son of God. You're worshiping a phony king. This is the God of gods. You see, not only do we see that Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, first of all, they stood up. Secondly, they stood fast. But then point number three, they stood out. All of Babylon knew who the true and living God was. He is the true and living God, the one to serve, the one to lift up. Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah walked forth out of that fiery burning furnace. Didn't have a smell of smoke on them. No hurt. Their hair wasn't singed. All that burnt was the ropes that bound them. They fell down and the ropes broke. And they stood up face to face with the Son of God. Folks, we're about to come into 2021. And my question for you is this. Would your resolution be that from now on I'm going to stand up? I'm going to stand fast for what I believe. And my God is going to stand out as I live and serve him. I think this is a pretty pertinent message for the happy new year. Let's pray. Oh, Father, I thank you for the word of God today. And for Hannah and I, Michelle and Azariah, who chose to stand up, to stand fast, and to stand out. Father, I pray that you'll work in our hearts today to realize that even today we should do the same. That it's so easy to cover things up, so easy to appear as though, oh, we agree with you. But Father, we're deep within our hearts. We know who the true and living God is. We know that this world didn't just appear. We know that you have it all under control and that we can serve you, that we can trust in you, that we can rely upon you, that, Father, we can find comfort and peace even in turmoil and pain and anguish and sorrow. We know that you're in control. We know that it's all to glorify you. Help us stand up. Help us stand fast in this new year that's coming up. And, Father, we'll certainly praise you for it with every head bowed and every eye closed. As I'm closing in prayer today, will you make a commitment to the Lord that you'll be willing to stand up, to stand fast? Maybe you're here today and you say, you know, preacher, I don't know Christ as my Savior. I've never trusted in Him. I don't know for sure if heaven's my eternal home. I don't have that peace as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. They knew who their God was. They knew who they worshipped. They knew where their faith was because they were willing to stand up when things got hot, when things got difficult, when things got hard. You know, my friend, now is the time to know Jesus. Now is the time to know Jesus because listen to this. When you meet him, it's too late. Do you know him? Have you trusted in him? He was there in that fiery burning furnace with Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. They had fellowship with him. Oh, my friend, you want to know him before you meet him. Because stop, drop, and roll does not work in hell. Oh, Father, I pray that you'll work in hearts and ways that I can. Save that soul nearest hell today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
If you'd stand and turn to hymn number 153 for our invitation. If you want to publicly display your new stand or your old stand, the pulpit's open. Come up and pray. 153, 53. Here you go. Oh, ready? Okay. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Verse 2. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. On the last, please. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Amen. Please bow your hearts. Father God, thank you so much for today's message and for this morning's Sunday school. Help us to receive this message into our hearts and let it, let it be a new fire inside of us, God, that we can go out and be the salt and the light of the earth for you, Jesus. Um, and bring us the opportunities that, that we can take to help lead people to you, Jesus. And we ask this all in your precious, precious name. Amen. You are dismissed.